You know, normally I don't make a video a little bit after I wake up, but I really want to get this posted and show this to the rest of the community because this has some implications that I think are much more far reaching than we may initially realize. So make sure that uh, you are hard for this because it certainly didn't make me hard. So if one of us can be hard, then that's what matters because after all, he is flaccid and we need to be hard. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support. It really does mean the world to me. Now, as I just said, I just woke up, so if I'm not that explosive with my reaction, I apologize. Um, I was looking at this article last night on YGOProDeck.com, and... I would leave a link to it in the description. The problem is that YouTube, unless it's like a direct YouTube link, has been known to strike videos down and put strike put strikes on people's accounts. Review Tech USA is a perfect example for whenever they share articles like from Polygon, IGN, what have you. So I don't wanna take that risk. However, in the screenshot that I'm gonna be doing in editing, I'll be sure to include the URL to both this Q&A answer as well as the YGO Pro Deck article so that you can go and read both for yourself. But basically what happened was, and this was like a couple weeks ago, I, I'm just now seeing this. I knew of this like Q&A to a degree, like I knew about like the face down banish card thing, but I didn't know about all of this. So essentially what happened was that there's this guy on YGOProDeck.com that writes like these type of like judges Q&A type of thing. And he was talking about this email actually that he sent to the Japanese Konami support like headquarters. And essentially, it was a question about cards that are banished face down. You know, when we think about cards that are banished face down, we think that there's really no way to get them back unless you're playing something like Cyframe Lord Omega that can recycle face down banished cards. You think of something like Necroface that takes all the banished cards and puts them back in the deck. No one's playing Necroface, obviously, because the card's just garbage. Um, but the point that I'm making is that if something is banished face down, there's usually not a way to get it back for the rest of the duel, you know? And so... With the release of the new Cash Chira cards, you have cards like Diabolsis that are already out, but then you also have things like Cash Chira Rise Heart that can banish cards face down by detaching three Xyz materials. So when you're banishing all these cards face down and then a Rise Heart has the effect to take any card that's banished face up or face down from either player's banished zone and attach it, how are you able to determine what card came from where? So this was a question that this judge asked uh, and sent an email to Konami. And this was the question that's posed. I'm gonna read all this to you and then we'll discuss. So it says here, how do you specify which of your opponent's face down banished cards you are targeting with an effect or choosing when? My opponent has cards that are banished face down because they activated Pot of Desires and Extrav, as well as cards that were banished face down by each of the effects of my number 89 Diabolus as the Mind Hacker. If I now target my opponent's face down banished card for the second effect of Cyframe Lord Omega, or choose an opponent's face down banished card when resolving the second effect of Cash Tiro Rise Art, how do I specify an opponent's face down banished card? Do I need to choose randomly? Can I choose a card based on what caused it to be banished face down? This is the answer that we got, and this is gonna potentially cause a lot of problems. When choosing a face down banished card, you may identify what it was banished by, that's fine. If a player's cards have been banished face down multiple times at either player's request, ensure that it remains recognizable how each card was banished while continuing the duel. For example, you may do so by keeping them separated while face down. So they're talking about like keeping separate piles of banished zones face down. That already in of itself is an issue and I was aware of that before making this video. I knew that that was a ruling that Konami had put out, but that is an issue, but this is where it really becomes an issue. For example, if your number 89 Diabolsis the Mind Hacker has resolved its first effect twice in two separate turns and two cards from your opponent's extra deck are banished face down, as a result, one of them is the quote, the first card banished by the first effect, and the other card is quote, the second card banished by its first effect. Ensure that both players can identify and distinguish these cards while face down while continuing the duel. Cool. Furthermore, if your opponent activates Pot of Desires by banishing the top 10 cards of their deck face down as a cost, these cards will remain recognizable as, quote, the 10 cards banished to activate that Pot of Desires. However, you will not be able to distinguish between those 10 cards. For example, you will not be able to identify which particular card was at the top of the deck before being banished. Finally, if there's a need to keep cards separate and recognizable as described above, it may be necessary and appropriate to keep your banished cards in multiple distinct piles. 
So what you're telling me is that even if I banish a card off of Diabolsis and like I know, for example, it's Apollosa Boa the Goddess, and then on the next turn I do it again and I hit your access code talker, both players know that those cards are access code and Apollosa respectively. But by the by this rule, by this QA, I'm not allowed to say, hey, off of a Rise Heart secondary or first effect. I want to take your uh, your Apollosa or your access code, whatever. I have to say the second card vanished by the first effect of Diabolsis. Like that just seems so asinine to me. And it's going to cause a lot of ruling nightmares in events come 2023 once we get Cash Tier or Rise Heart and Photon Hypernova. Because Cash Tier is going to be a good tier one deck as long as it doesn't get Nibiru out of existence and back, or Sphere Mode for that matter, by extension. And I'm sure that some of you are thinking, well, Avery, I don't plan on playing Cash Tier. That's not going to be my issue. That's going to be for the opponent to, to keep in mind and to keep track of. But that's not really true because it's going to be both players' responsibilities to maintain the game state as correct as it possibly can. If you are giving false information to your opponent or if you're not doing as they ask, making multiple banish piles, then they could potentially call a judge on you for misrepresenting the game state. You know, it could be seen as sharking if they go to take one of your face down banish cards and you're like, oh, you didn't declare one of the face down banish cards from my pot of desires, judge. Like, th there's going to be people that try and pull shit off like that. So even if you're not playing Cash Tira, even if you're not playing ca any cards that banish face down, this is still an issue for you that you have to keep in mind. And that's not really fair fair for the player not playing Cash Tira. It should be the Cash Tira or hell any player that's playing a lot of banishing cards responsibility to keep track of what is happening to the banish pile. And going back to the point of having multiple banish piles, if you've ever been to a regional or YCS or hell, maybe you've even seen this at your locals, you only have so much fucking space at the table. <laughs> like, sometimes you're elbow to elbow. Like, you're, you're smelling the armpit hair of the player next to you that hasn't showered in a fucking week. Like, uh, there, there are some Yu-Gi-Oh players that smell like a dog's ass. Like, real talk. And you mean to tell me that now you want me to make extra space on top of the what little space I may already have at an event. Especially regional or YCS for that matter because you're so enclosed next to each other. That you want me to have multiple face down banish zones, and on top of that, both of us have to keep track of what pile is fucking what. That that is a headache in of itself. Holy balls! Now there is a way that you can avoid this, right? You can a if there is a lot of cards banished, like is mentioned in this YGO Pro deck article that I'm going to read from in a second as well. You can just roll a dice. Like, you can roll a dice if there's a bunch of banished cards, even if they're different sleeves because they came from the extra deck, which. He also mentions in the article, it's like, you know that it's from the extra deck. Like, even Konami has said, keep your sleeves separate from your extra deck and your main deck. So it's not like someone can just be a jackass and use all the same colored sleeves for the extra and the main deck. That's going to cause issues. So, like, you could roll a dice or you could, better yet, just not even take anything from the opponent's banish zone that isn't already face up. You can just take cards from your own banish pile and not really have to worry about it unless, like, you run out of cards that... You know, you don't have anything banishing you have to take from the opponent. So moving over to the YGO Pro deck article, this is what he says about it. So he says, this was one of those times our email did not receive a response for almost a week. This Q&A came from his email, which is usually a good sign that the matter has been escalated internally. And then our answer dropped, not by email, but straight to the database in the form of the Q&A I just read you. The answers we got were both extremely detailed and somewhat unexpected. And then he says, uh, you know, he's talking about it and whatever. Uh, in practice, you will simply call out the Infinitrack Goliath I banish with Diabolsis. Then your opponent can take that face down banish card and hand it to you. That's a pretty straightforward way to realize that the Q&A tells you is permissible. While spreading your face down banish cards in separate piles all over the playmat makes for funny memes, it does not in fact make for not good gameplay, which... I kind of disagree. I think that does lead to not very good gameplay. The other point he makes is, however, where things get a bit weird on the first reading, the Q&A posits that if your opponent banishes 10 cards on the top of the deck face down to activate desires, you can't distinguish any one individual card in particular. You c explicitly cannot tell which of the cards used to be at the top of the deck before being banished. They only remain identifiable as the group as the 10 cards banished to activate desires that one time. So like, that still doesn't really make any sense because both players know what the top card was. You know what I mean? 
So then he goes on to say here, after getting over my initial bewilderment, my mind quickly settled on another interaction involving distinguishing cards that often baffle players at first. The cards set by Sky Striker Mecha Module's multi-role. Since it's been a hot minute since Sky Striker has been at the forefront of the meta, quick recap, multi-role's effect takes a bunch of spells from the grave, sets them to its controller's field. Both players can see which spells are taken from the grave, but only multi-role's controller gets to know which spell gets set to which zone. Once you think about it, the parallels are pretty striking. Cards that were perfectly distinguishable are moved en masse to another location face down and are suddenly indistinguishable from another. But I can see which card was picked up and placed on the field where. So, like, what the fuck, Nami? Like, both players know where the cards are being set. Like, my opponent can't take the knowledge of the spell cards that they just set away from me when they go to set them after I've already seen them pull them out of their graveyard. You know, this isn't like Men in Black. He's going to take a little camera shining in my face and all of a sudden I fucking forget. So, like, either we're going to see a lot of just toxic crap where people have like 10 face down banish zones identifying which is what. One's for Desires, one's for extra, one's for, I don't know, your Flunder banish pile. This really has me concerned and worried because not only is it going to be a ruling nightmare in my opinion, it's going to be so hard to keep track of all of your cards while also making your board. Can you imagine like you're playing tier element right now, full power, and you're milling all these cards, you're trying to build your board. Oh, but then you also have to make more space on your mat, which may already be enclosed because of what little space you have at the table initially to make for your banish zones. Like at that point, like... You might as well just be like, look, man, if you need something from my banish, I'm going to put it all here in one pile. Just take what you want. I don't give a shit. Like, you're either going to have to do that or you're, like, going to have to figure out a way to make, like, extra space with, like, I don't know, make more room at the tables or something. It just seems like such a goddamn headache, and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, and with me playing Cash Tira, like, I'm not even going to try and take cards from my opponent's banish zone because if they're banished face down, my opponent's not going to have a way to get back to it anyway. If they have anything that's banished face up, I'll take it. If it's banished face down, I'm not even touching it. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like I said, I'm hopefully you saw in the video the screenshot of the URL links to both the article and the Q&A. Like I said, I don't want to link them in the description and possibly get a strike on my channel. I saw that happen on Review Tech USA. I don't want to deal with that headache. So let me know what you guys think about this baby back BS. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next Banish Pile video.